Hola, me lo diga, soy Nico. Love not minding my own business. I love being nosy. Eavesdropping is my favorite pastime. So today, we're here to talk about something that is unfortunate, but I'm actually surprised that it took so long for this to come out. Nico, what do you mean? I'll elaborate in a few moments, but first, if you like this kind of content, make sure to follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Nico's Aesthetics for more exclusive videos, weekly lives, and to be a part of the live stream. Multiple live streams, depending on your tier. Nico, yeah, you probably realized that I paused after that, because if you're one of my girlies, you know why I paused. I'm just not going to address it right now. <laughs> but... Let's get to the actual topic. So, Fat Rabbit Killer. If you don't know who that is, um, here's a quick backstory. He is a very famous adult performer. He does not show his face though. He has never shown his face in any of his videos and it allows the audience to essentially insert their fantasy of what the content creator looks like. Because all they really know, peen is long, man got a, a fit tone body, and he be laying in it. That's all they really knew. But he unfortunately, I mean, it's fortunate enough that he's very famous in the adult industry, even without showing his face, he's a very popular name. So he actually got his brand trademarked. Nico, why is that a bad thing? Because it put his government name on the internet. I didn't know trademarks worked like that. <laughs> I, I genuinely did not. But essentially, it allowed someone who had entirely way too much time on their hands to go search up the Fat Rabbit Killer trademark, find his name, and then expose him on Twitter. Nico, what do you mean? Essentially, if you had Googled Fat Rabbit Killer, or if you had Googled, let's say, J Knight, for example, because I'm going to tie that in because I had a situation with him about this kind of thing, they're already on the internet. If you Google their names into YouTube, people have made videos about who these people are. Like, that's what I'm saying. So that's why I'm like, I'm surprised it actually took this long because if you did not know, Jay Knight and Mr. Bolden had gotten into it because Mr. Bolden claimed that Jay Knight, who was the only person who had the video of him bottoming for him, leaked it as revenge adult cinematography. And when Jay Knight was questioned about it, <laughs> He essentially said, no, my ex-boyfriend leaked it and put it on my own fans. So that's how that situation went. And I covered that story. But the thing is, Mr. Bolden had put Jay Knight's government name and his actual photos on Twitter. And at that point, it started to circulate. And I did a video on it. And since the information was already public, I saw no issue putting what was posted on a public forum into a video format. And he threatened to sue me. <laughs> Nico, I should have giggled, but he threatened to sue me. And I actually, um, while I was out here in LA, I ran into him a few times. And it's been a situation where we kind of just avoid looking at each other because though this information has been public, let's say, because like I said, while he threatened to sue me, I had YouTubed his government name and there was a video that was posted years ago identifying him as J9. I then Googled his government name and it was already all that. Like that's the thing, it's already on the internet. But if you are not actively searching for this kind of thing, it's not general public knowledge. So me putting it in a video format gave it a, I'd say gave it life. As in I brought more eyes to it. So that made it a more public thing. And eventually I did blur his face that I put in there. I blurred out his name, I bleeped it out because at the end of the day, even if I'm not the one that posted it, I take responsibility for giving it a larger platform. And I want to say I'm sorry to him about that. Obviously, because of the scenario that it was, him allegedly leaking somebody's tape of them bottoming. That's why I was like, mm, I, you know, it's it's a wrong plus a wrong equals a right in my, in my book. But at the same time, I understand that it wasn't right for me to put it onto a larger platform. And I want to say I'm sorry for that because <laughs> I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not going to come on here and like condemn other people for something that I've done in the past, even if I had quote unquote a reason, because a reason that's valid to me may not be valid to the next person. So as we move forward to Fat Rabbit Killer, 
I say it's not okay for the sole purpose of Fat Rabbit Killer has never been in a situation where it was warranted. As in, he's never leaked somebody's tapes. He's never done any wrong to someone as far as I've seen. Sure, he's ruined a couple of holes, but that's just because the man got the meat now. You know, it's not something he can control. But, <laughs> but to my knowledge, Fat Rabbit Killer has never been a mess. And he actually jokes and like has positive interactions with his audience. So to put his name out there and then list his actual job, as in they started to post pictures of him at red carpet events. They started to post pictures of him doing internet interviews because this man is an executive and he's, a, he's, he's very high up there in corporate America. So they started putting it, like putting his interviews and his scenes side by side and you see the same scenery and background. And the only reason I'm covering this and feeling confident about covering this is because it's already blowing up. As in the whole Jay Knight thing, Mr. Bolden posted his name and photos, but that didn't really take off. That's why I'm apologizing. This fat rabbit killer thing is going ridiculous to the point that people are trying to contact him on his phone and through his job and it's getting invasive. And I definitely understand now because I remember I did a video on people that hide their faces in the adult cinematography sphere. And I said, I personally do enjoy facial reactions, so that's why I don't watch a lot of content creators who hide their face, but <laughs> it's that, especially with Fat Rabbit Killer, now that I'm seeing what's happening to him, especially because he was in corporate America, I understand why people hide their faces. And if you've seen one of my side branches of business <laughs> on Twitter, you would see that my face was also not in a specific scene because I'm getting more comfortable with being me and showing my different forms of sexuality and intimacy, but at the end of the day, I too will retire. <laughs> I too will leave, you know, digital sphere, adult sphere behind as most people do as they move on to another career path because most people don't just stay in the same career path. And I, I really feel like media in itself changes so rapidly. That is one of those things like you'll be on top for a few years, but I don't think it's forever. So I too don't want my face <laughs> inside these videos. And obviously people know it's me because I'm very proud of the content that I produce, but there's a line between, okay, this is a familiar body and this is a face, you know what I mean? So people going out of their way to not only find out his career occupation, to not only randomly search his trademark to find his name, to not only find pictures of him on red carpet events, like big TV show premieres. It's, it's, I feel like there was malice behind it. And as someone who's put this kind of thing on a platform before, I want to say, I don't think it's right, especially because I did that years ago. I've grown, that's not an excuse, but I already told you my reasoning behind it. That's why I'm just sitting here like as an adult, as a 26 year old, especially as someone who is in the industry now, I'm just like, I definitely understand why people want their privacy. And I'm a, I'm a private person, even as a content creator, let's say YouTube, even before the OnlyFans side venture. And I still like my privacy. You know, I tweet, I put up jokes, but at the end of the day, I don't come online, I don't get to y'all. <laughs> because the, peop the people on the internet are not kind to vulnerability. I don't vent to y'all. I don't like put too much about my family situation. I don't put too much about my personal life just because at the end of the day, people want to be able to clock out and go about their business. Because while doing research for this video, I found a video interview that he had done where he was basically talking about how social media affects your mental health. And I definitely see it. it, it it's a negative vacuum because in my opinion, as someone who has not done any wrong to someone publicly, because we can track a lot of performers who have done some fucked up shit in their career, he has not done anything to warrant them essentially doxing him and putting it on a larger platform. Because if we're being for real, the pictures of his face were already online, but his government name, his occupation, where he goes, the places he frequents, that was not public knowledge until other people put it on a larger platform for the sole purpose of saying, oh my God, I know who this person is. Rather than, oh, they did something wrong and should be held accountable. So definitely drop your opinions down below. How do you feel about performers essentially having their faces exposed for the sole purpose of, I want the world to know who you are, but also how do you feel about how this one played out versus the Jay Knight situation where Mr. Bolden essentially doxed him for allegedly 
leaking their adult cinematography tape revenge version, you know, and how Fat Rabbit Killer has essentially done nothing to deserve this. And in my opinion, I feel sorry for him because he purposely was trying to keep these parts of his life separate because a lot of people don't realize just because you are in the corporate machine, just because you're an older gentleman, because I also feel like people calling him ugly and saying that, oh, this isn't what I wanted, etc., was because they saw him in a red carpet attire, which was more metrosexual rather than the tins and the fantasy that they had placed onto his headless torso. Also, the ageism, because he is an older gentleman. When I talk about ageism, I'm talking about discrimination like this where he is an older gentleman, he's actually very attractive. In my opinion, he's still fox. But he's an older gentleman, and people assume that he was in his 20s because of how he, how he was laying in the pipe. But that's the thing, it's like, I, I just don't understand the whole, I wanna expose you and then clown you, when in my opinion, he is a handsome man, and a lot of people that were sitting there dragging him and calling him ugly were not on societal totem poles. So I'm just like, Y'all are randomly attacking and degrading this man who you were getting your jollies off to when you thought it was a headless torso for the sole purpose that he's been online for so long and you've put so much of a fantasy onto him and he just didn't fulfill that at the end of the day. But definitely drop your opinions down below because this is something that I wasn't expecting to happen. Once again, his face has always been online. Same with Yardi Style and Jay Knight. They're always, like, you, their faces are already exposed. It's more so their government names and personal lives have been kept secret for so long. But definitely drop your opinions down below. Boop. And once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I'll see you guys there.